The First Book of the Kings Now King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Therefore his servant said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for our lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her lie in your bosom, that our lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Abishag the Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very lovely, and she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself. I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, Why have you done so? He was also very good-looking. His mother had borne him after Absalom. Then he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed and helped Adonijah. But Zadok, the priest, Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and the mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen and fattened cattle by the stone of Zoeleth, which is by Enrogel. He also invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Beniah, the mighty man, or Solomon his brother. So Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Have you not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, has become king, and David our Lord does not know it? Come, please, let me now give you advice, that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go immediately to King David and say to him, did you not, my lord, O king, swear to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why, then, has Adonijah become king? Then, while you are still talking there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went into the chamber to the king. Now the king was very old, and Abishag, the Shunammite, was serving the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did homage to the king. Then the king said, What is your wish? My lord, you swore by the Lord your God to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly Solomon your son shall reign after me and he shall sit on my throne. So now, look, Adonijah has become king, and now, my lord the king, you do not know about it. He has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the sons of the king, Abiathar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And as for you, my lord, O oh king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, that you should tell them who will sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise, it will happen, when my lord the king rests with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon will be counted as offenders. And just then, while she was talking with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So they told the king, Here is Nathan the prophet. 
And when he came in before the king, he bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, have you said Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today, and has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons and the commanders of the army, and Abiathar the priest. And look, they are eating and drinking before him, and they say, Long live King Adonijah. But he has not invited me, me your servant, nor Zadok the priest, nor Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, nor your servant Solomon. Has this thing been done by my lord the king, and you have not told your servant who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress, just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place, so I certainly will do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and paid homage to the king. Let my lord, King David, live forever. Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. So they came before the king. Take with you the servants of your lord, and have Solomon my son ride on my own mule, and take him down to Gihon. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel, and blow the horn and say, Long live King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him, and he shall come and sit on my throne, and he shall be king in my place, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king, Amen. May the Lord God of my Lord the King say so too. As the Lord has been with my Lord the King, even so may he be with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the Karathites and the Pelathites went down, and had Solomon ride on King David's mule, and took him to Gion. Then Zadok the priest took a horn of oil from the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the horn, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up after him, and the people played the flutes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished eating. And when Joab heard the sound of the horn, he said, Why is the city in such a noisy uproar? While he was still speaking, there came Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest. And Adonijah said to him, Come in, for you are a prominent man, and bring good news. Then Jonathan answered, and said to Adonijah, No, our lord King David has made Solomon king. The king has sent him with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Beniah the son of Jehoiada, the Carathites and the Pelathites, and they have made him ride on the king's mule. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Jehan. 
and they have gone up from there rejoicing, so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Also, Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom, and moreover, the king's servants have gone to bless our Lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon better than your name, and may he make his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed himself on the bed. Also, the king said thus, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit on my throne this day, while my eyes see it. So all the guests who were with Adonijah were afraid, and arose, and each one went his way. Now Adonijah was afraid of Solomon. So he arose, and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, Indeed, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon. For look, he has taken hold of the horns of the altar, saying, let King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. Then Solomon said, If he proves himself a worthy man, not one hair of him shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent them to bring him down from the altar. And he came and fell down before King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your house. Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you know also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, the son of Ner, and Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he killed. And he shed the blood of war in peacetime, and put the blood of war on his belt that was around his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore, do according to your wisdom, and do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace, but show kindness to the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For so they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And see, you have with you Shimei, the son of Gira, a Benjamite from Behurim, who cursed me with a malicious curse in the day when I went to Maenaim. But he came down to meet me at the Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man, and know what you ought to do to him. But bring his gray hair down to the grave with blood. So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. The period that David reigned over Israel was forty years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years. Then Solomon 
sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Now Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Do you come peaceably? Peaceably. I have something to say to you. Say it. You know that the kingdom was mine, and all Israel had set their expectations on me, that I should reign. However, the kingdom has been turned over and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. Now I ask one petition of you. Do not deny me. Say it. Please speak to King Solomon, for he will not refuse you, that he may give me Abishag, the Shunammite, as wife. Very well. I will speak for you to the king. Bathsheba therefore went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her, and bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne, and had a throne set for the king's mother. So she sat at his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of you. Do not refuse me. Ask it, my mother, for I will not refuse you. Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah your brother as wife. Now why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother. For him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Sariah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, May God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now, therefore, as the Lord lives, who has confirmed me and set me on the throne of David my father, and who has established a house for me, as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon sent by the hand of Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he struck him down, and he died. And to Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathoth, to your own fields, for you are deserving of death. But... I will not put you to death at this time, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before my father, David, and because you were afflicted every time my father was afflicted. So Solomon removed Abiathar from being priest to the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spoke concerning the house of Eli at Shiloh. Then news came to Joab. For Joab had defected to Adonijah, though he had not defected to Absalom. So Joab fled to the tabernacle of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. And King Solomon was told, Joab has fled to the tabernacle of the Lord. There he is, by the altar. Then Solomon sent Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, Go, strike him down. So Beniah went to the tabernacle of the Lord and said to him, Thus says the king, Come out. No, but I will die here. And Beniah brought back word to the king. Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. Do as he has said, and strike him down and bury him, that you may take away from me and from the house of my father the innocent blood which Joab shed. So the Lord will return his blood on his head, because he struck down two men more righteous and better than he, and killed them with the sword. Abner, the son of Ner, the commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jetha, the commander of the army of Judah, though my father David did not know it. 
Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab, and upon the head of his descendants forever. But upon David and his descendants, upon his house and his throne, there shall be peace forever from the Lord. So Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up and struck and killed him. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, in his place over the army. And the king put Zadok, the priest, in the place of Abiathar. Then the king sent and called for Shimei, and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there. And do not go out from there anywhere. For it shall be, on the day you go out and cross the brook Kidron, know for certain you shall surely die. Your blood shall be on your own head. And Shimei said to the king, The saying is good. As my lord the king has said, so your servant will do. So Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. Now it happened at the end of three years that two slaves of Shimei ran away to Achish, the son of Maacah, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, Look, your slaves are in Gath. So Shimei arose, saddled his donkey, and went to Achish at Gath to seek his slaves. And Shimei went and brought his slaves from Gath. And Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had come back. Then the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out and travel anywhere you shall surely die? And you said to me, The word I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I gave you? You know, as your heart acknowledges, all the wickedness that you did to my father David. Therefore, the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. But King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. Thus the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David, until he had finished building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall all around Jerusalem. Meanwhile the people sacrificed at the high places, because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father, David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, 
too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. Oh, my lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened, the third day after I had given birth, that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house, except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, Indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king, and the king said, The one says, this is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, No, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. Divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. Oh, my lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered, Give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. And all Israel 
heard of the judgment which the king had rendered. And they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. So King Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his officials, Azariah, the son of Zadok the priest, Elihoreph, and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, scribes, Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, the recorder, Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, over the army, Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, Azariah, the son of Nathan, over the officers, Zabud, the son of Nathan, a priest and the king's friend, Ahisha, over the household, and Adoniram, the son of Abda, over the labor force. And Solomon had twelve governors over all Israel, who provided food for the king and his household. Each one made provision for one month of the year. These are their names. Ben-Hur in the mountains of Ephraim, Ben-Dika in Mekaz, Shealbim, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Beth Hanan. Ben he said in Aruboth, to him belong Soko and all the land of Hepha. Ben Abinadab in all the regions of Dor, he had Tephath, the daughter of Solomon as wife. Beana, the son of Ahilad, in Tanak, Megiddo, and all Beth Sheen, which is beside Zeretan, below Jezreel. From Beth Sheen to Abel Mehola as far as the other side of Jachnam, Ben-Geba in Ramoth-Gilead. To him belong the towns of Jea, the son of Manasseh, in Gilead. To him also belong the region of Agad, in Bashan. Sixty large cities with walls and bronze gate bars. Ahinadab, the son of Ido, in Maonaim. Ahimeaz, in Naphtali, he also took Basimath, the daughter of Solomon, as wife. Baana, the son of Hushai, in Asher and Aloth. Jehoshaphat, the son of Perua, in Issachar. Shimei, the son of Elah, in Benjamin. Geba, the son of Uri, in the land of Gilead, in the country of Sihan, king of the Amorites, and of Og, king of Bashan. He was the only governor who was in the land. Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and rejoicing. So Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Now Solomon's provision for one day was thirty cores of fine flour, sixty cores of meal, ten fatted oxen, twenty oxen from the pastures, and one hundred sheep, besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fatted fowl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, from Tipsa even to Gaza, namely over all the kings on this side of the river, and he had peace on every side all around him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, each man under his vine and his fig tree, from Dan as far as Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. And these governors, each man in his month, provided food for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table. There was no lack in their supply. They also brought barley and straw to the proper place for the horses and steeds, each man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the East 
and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, Calco, and Dada the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke three thousand proverbs, and his songs were one thousand and five. Also he spoke of trees, from the cedar tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of animals, of birds, of creeping things, and of fish. And men of all nations, from all the kings of the earth, who had heard of his wisdom, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon, because he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always loved David. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the wars which were fought against him on every side, until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrence, and behold, I propose to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spoke to my father David, saying, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, he shall build the house for my name. Now, therefore, command that they cut down cedars for me from Lebanon, and my servants will be with your servants and I will pay you wages for your servants according to whatever you say. For you know there is none among us who has skill to cut timber like the Sidonians. So it was, when Hiram heard the words of Solomon, that he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, for he has given David a wise son over this great people. Then Hiram sent to Solomon, I have considered the message which you sent me, and I will do all you desire concerning the cedar and cypress logs. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon to the sea. I will float them in rafts by sea to the place you indicate to me, and will have them broken apart there. Then you can take them away, and you shall fulfill my desire by giving food for my household. Then Hiram gave Solomon cedar and cypress logs, according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram twenty thousand cores of wheat as food for his household, and twenty cores of pressed oil. Thus Solomon gave to Hiram year by year, so the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he had promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty together. Then King Solomon raised up a labor force out of all Israel, and the labor force was thirty thousand men. And he sent them to Lebanon, ten thousand a month in shifts. They were one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the labor force. Solomon had 70,000 who carried burdens and 80,000 who quarried stone in the mountains, besides 3,300 from the chiefs of Solomon's deputies who supervised the people who labored in the work. And the king commanded them to quarry large stones, costly stones, and hewn stones to lay the foundation of the temple. So Solomon's builders, Hiram's builders, and the Gebelites quarried them, and they prepared timber and stones to build the temple. And it came to pass, 
In the 480th year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. Now the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, its length was sixty cubits, its width twenty, and its height thirty cubits. The vestibule in front of the sanctuary of the house was twenty cubits long across the width of the house, and the width of the vestibule extended ten cubits from the front of the house. And he made for the house windows with beveled frames. Against the wall of the temple he built chambers all around, against the walls of the temple, all around the sanctuary and the inner sanctuary. Thus he made side chambers all around it. The lowest chamber was five cubits wide, the middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide. For he made narrow ledges around the outside of the temple, so that the support beams would not be fastened into the walls of the temple. And the temple, when it was being built, was built with stone finished at the quarry, so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. The doorway for the middle story was on the right side of the temple. They went up by stairs to the middle story, and from the middle to the third. So he built the temple and finished it, and he panelled the temple with beams and boards of cedar, and he built side chambers against the entire temple each five cubits high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams. Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you, which I spoke to your father David and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. And he built the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards. From the floor of the temple to the ceiling, he paneled the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the temple with planks of cypress. Then he built the twenty-cubit room at the rear of the temple, from floor to ceiling with cedar boards. He built it inside as the inner sanctuary, as the most holy place. And in front of it, the temple sanctuary was forty cubits long. The inside of the temple was cedar, carved with ornamental buds and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. And he prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple, to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was twenty cubits long, twenty cubits wide, and twenty cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold, and overlaid the altar of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. He stretched gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary, and overlaid it with gold. The whole temple he overlaid with gold, until he had finished all the temple. Also, he overlaid with gold the entire altar that was by the inner sanctuary. Inside the inner sanctuary he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits, and the other wing of the cherub five cubits. Ten cubits, from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other and the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherubim were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cherub. Then he set the cherubim inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim, so that the wing of the one touched one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. And their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. Also he overlaid the cherubim with gold. Then he carved all the walls of the temple all around, 
both the inner and outer sanctuaries with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. And the floor of the temple he overlaid with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and doorposts were one-fifth of the wall. The two doors were of olive wood, and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold, and he spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So for the door of the sanctuary he also made doorposts of olive wood, one-fourth of the wall, and the two doors were of cypress wood. Two panels comprised one folding door, and two panels comprised the other folding door. Then he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on them, and overlaid them with gold, applied evenly on the carved work. And he built the inner court with three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year, the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid in the month of Ziv, and in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its details and according to all its plans. So he was seven years in building it. But Solomon took thirteen years to build his own house. So he finished all his house. He also built the house of the forest of Lebanon. Its length was 100 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits, with four rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams on the pillars. And it was paneled with cedar above the beams that were on 45 pillars, 15 to a row. There were windows with beveled frames in three rows, and window was opposite window in three tiers and all the doorways and doorposts had rectangular frames, and window was opposite window in three tiers. He also made the hall of pillars. Its length was fifty cubits, and its width thirty cubits. And in front of them was a portico with pillars, and a canopy was in front of them. Then he made a hall for the throne, the hall of judgment, where he might judge and it was panelled with cedar from floor to ceiling. And the house where he dwelt had another court inside the hall, of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken as wife. All these were of costly stones cut to size, trimmed with saws inside and out, from the foundation to the eaves, and also on the outside to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, large stones, some ten cubits and some eight cubits. And above were costly stones hewn to size and cedar wood. The great court was enclosed with three rows of hewn stones and a row of cedar beams. So were the inner court of the house of the Lord and the vestibule of the temple. Now King Solomon sent and brought Huram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a bronze worker. He was filled with wisdom and understanding and skill in working with all kinds of bronze work. So he came to King Solomon and did all his work, and he cast two pillars of bronze, each one eighteen cubits high, and a line of twelve cubits measured the circumference of each. Then he made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. He made a lattice network with wreaths of chain work for the capitals which were on top of the pillars, seven chains for one capital and seven for the other capital. So he made the pillars and two rows of pomegranates above the network all around to cover the capitals that were on top. And thus he did for the other capital. The capitals which were on top of the pillars in the hall were in the shape of lilies, four cubits. The capitals on the two pillars also had pomegranates above, by the convex surface 
which was next to the network. And there were 200 such pomegranates in rows on each of the capitals all around. Then he set up the pillars by the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the right and called its name Jachin. And he set up the pillar on the left and called its name Boaz. The tops of the pillars were in the shape of lilies. So the work of the pillars was finished. And he made the sea of cast bronze, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. Its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Below its brim were ornamental buds encircling it all around, ten to a cubit, all the way around the sea. The ornamental buds were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. The sea was set upon them, and all their back parts pointed inward. It was a handbreadth thick, and its brim was shaped like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It contained two thousand baths. He also made ten carts of bronze. Four cubits was the length of each cart, four cubits its width and three cubits its height. And this was the design of the carts. They had panels, and the panels were between frames. On the panels that were between the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. And on the frames was a pedestal on top. Below the lions and oxen were wreaths of plated work. Every cart had four bronze wheels and axles of bronze, and its four feet had supports. Under the laver were supports of cast bronze beside each wreath. Its opening inside the crown at the top was one cubit in diameter, and the opening was round, shaped like a pedestal, one and a half cubits in outside diameter and also on the opening were engravings, but the panels were square, not round. Under the panels were the four wheels, and the axles of the wheels were joined to the cart. The height of a wheel was one and a half cubits. The workmanship of the wheels was like the workmanship of a chariot wheel. Their axle pins, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all of cast bronze and there were four supports at the four corners of each cart. Its supports were part of the cart itself. On the top of the cart, at the height of half a cubit, it was perfectly round. And on the top of the cart, its flanges and its panels were of the same casting. On the plates of its flanges and on its panels, he engraved cherubim, lions and palm trees, wherever there was a clear space on each, with wreaths all around. Thus he made the ten carts. All of them were of the same mold, one measure and one shape. Then he made ten lavers of bronze. Each laver contained forty baths, and each laver was four cubits. On each of the ten carts was a laver. And he put five carts on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. He set the sea on the right side of the house, toward the southeast. Huram made the lavers and the shovels and the bowls. So Huram finished doing all the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the two pillars, the two networks covering the two bowl-shaped capitals which were on top of the pillars, four hundred pomegranates for the two networks two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the pillars, the ten carts and ten lavers on the carts, one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and the bowls. All these articles, which Huram made for King Solomon for the house of the Lord, were of burnished bronze. In the plain of Jordan, the king had them cast in clay molds between Succoth and Zeretan. And Solomon did not weigh all the articles because there were so many. The weight of the bronze was not determined. 
Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of the Lord, the altar of gold and the table of gold, on which was the showbread, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, in front of the inner sanctuary, with the flowers and the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold the basins, the trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner room, the most holy place, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. So all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold, and the furnishings. He put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore all the men of Israel assembled with King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark. Then they brought up the Ark of the Lord, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Then the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from the outside. And they are there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel was standing. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and with his hand has fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son, who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke. And I have filled the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. And I have built a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have made a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, 
which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God in heaven above or on earth below like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants, who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk before me as you have walked before me. And now I pray, O God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God. And listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you today that your eyes may be open toward this temple night and day, toward the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place. Hear in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. When anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this temple, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin, because you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart and spreads out his hands toward this temple, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for your name's sake, for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and your outstretched arm. When he comes and prays toward this temple, hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, 
and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication to you in the land of those who took them captive, saying, We have sinned and done wrong. We have committed wickedness. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, who led them away captive, and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions which they have transgressed against you and grant them compassion before those who took them captive that they may have compassion on them for they are your people and your inheritance whom you brought out of Egypt out of the iron furnace that your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant and the supplication of your people Israel, to listen to them whenever they call to you. For you separated them from among all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance, as you spoke by your servant Moses when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And so it was, when Solomon had finished praying all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, that he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to heaven. Then he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice. Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before the Lord, be near the Lord our God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day may require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no other. Let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as at this day. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to the Lord, 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On the same day, the king consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. At that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days and seven more days. 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king 
and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David and for Israel, his people. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now if you walk before me, as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel, forever, as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them. And this house, which I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have embraced other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. Now. It happened at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Hiram, the king of Tyre, had supplied Solomon with cedar and cypress and gold as much as he desired. That King Solomon then gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. Then Hiram went from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, but they did not please him. So he said, what kind of cities are these which you have given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Cable, as they are to this day. Then Hiram sent the king 120 talents of gold. And this is the reason for the labor force which King Solomon raised, to build the house of the Lord, his own house, the Milo, the wall of Jerusalem, Hazor, Megiddo, and Giza. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Giza and burned it with fire, had killed the Canaanites who dwelt in the city, and had given it as a dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Giza, Lower Beth Horon, Baalath, and Tadmor in the wilderness, in the land of Judah, all the storage cities that Solomon had, cities for his chariots and cities for his cavalry, and whatever Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, who were not of the children of Israel, that is, their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel had not been able to destroy completely. From these Solomon raised forced labor as it is to this day. But of the children of Israel, Solomon made no forced laborers, because they were men of war and his servants, his officers, his captains, commanders of his chariots and his cavalry. 
Others were chiefs of the officials who were over Solomon's work, 550 who ruled over the people who did the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up from the city of David to her house which Solomon had built for her. Then he built the miller. Now three times a year Solomon offered burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar which he had built for the Lord, and he burnt incense with them on the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished the temple. King Solomon also built a fleet of ships at Ezion Geber, which is near Elat, on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom. Then Hiram sent his servants with the fleet, seamen who knew the sea, to work with the servants of Solomon. And they went to Ophir, and acquired 420 talents of gold from there, and brought it to King Solomon. Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord has loved Israel forever, therefore he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also, the ships of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought great quantities of almug wood and precious stones from Ophir. And the king made steps of the almug wood for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, also harps and stringed instruments for singers. There never again came such almug wood, nor has the like been seen to this day. Now King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold, besides that from the traveling merchants, from the income of traders, from all the kings of Arabia, and from the governors of the country. And King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 shekels of gold went into each shield. He also made 300 shields of hammered gold. Three minas of gold went into each shield. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round at the back. 
There were armrests on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side of the six steps. Nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver, for this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. For the king had merchant ships at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years, the merchant ships came bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and monkeys. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses and mules, at a set rate year by year. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. Also Solomon had horses imported from Egypt and Kiva. The king's merchants brought them in Kiva at the current price. Now a chariot that was imported from Egypt cost 600 shekels of silver and a horse 150. And thus, through their agents, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemash, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father, David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant, David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Now the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was a descendant of the king in Edom. 
for it happened when David was in Edom, and Joab, the commander of the army, had gone up to bury the slain after he had killed every male in Edom, because for six months Joab remained there with all Israel until he had cut down every male in Edom, that Hadad fled to go to Egypt, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him. Hadad was still a little child. Then they arose from Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house, apportioned food for him, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him as wife the sister of his own wife, that is, the sister of Queen Tapanes. Then the sister of Tapanes bore him Ginubath, his son, whom Tapanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Ginubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. So when Hadad heard in Egypt that David rested with his fathers, and that Joab the commander of the army was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. But what have you lacked with me, that suddenly you seek to go to your own country? Nothing, but do let me go anyway. And God raised up another adversary against him, Rezan, the son of Eliada, who had fled from his lord Hadadiza, king of Zobah. So he gathered men to him and became captain over a band of raiders, when David killed those of Zobah. And they went to Damascus, and dwelt there, and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the trouble that Hadad caused. And he abhorred Israel, and reigned over Syria. Then Solomon's servant, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite from Zerida, whose mother's name was Zerua, a widow, also rebelled against the king. And this is what caused him to rebel against the king. Solomon had built the millow and repaired the damages to the city of David his father. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph. Now it happened at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, met him on the way, and he had clothed himself with a new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him, and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the people of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do what is right in my eyes and keep my statutes and my judgments, as did his father David. However, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, because I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant, David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you, ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe, that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem the city which I have chosen for myself, to put my name there. So I will take you, and you shall reign over all your heart desires, and you shall be king over Israel. Then it shall be, if you heed 
all that I command you. Walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did. Then I will be with you and build for you an enduring house, as I built for David, and will give Israel to you. And I will afflict the descendants of David because of this, but not forever. Solomon therefore sought to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. Then Solomon rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. So it happened, when Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard it, he was still in Egypt, for he had fled from the presence of King Solomon and had been dwelling in Egypt, that they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam. Your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. Depart for three days, then come back to me. And the people departed. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, how do you advise me to answer these people? If you will be a servant to these people today, and serve them and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Thus you should speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly, and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy. But I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from the Lord that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, what share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was in charge of the revenue, 
but all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Now it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had come back, they sent for him and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none who followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, that he might restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shimea, the man of God. Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. Therefore they obeyed the word of the Lord, and turned back, according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim, and dwelt there. Also he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn back to their lord, Rehoboam king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam king of Judah. Therefore the king asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he set up one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan. He made shrines on the high places, and made priests from every class of people who were not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam ordained a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the feast that was in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did at Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made. And at Bethel, he installed the priests of the high places which he had made. So he made offerings on the altar which he had made at Bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, in the month which he had devised in his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and offered sacrifices on the altar, and burned incense. And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and on you, he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day. This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar. Arrest him! Then his hand 
which he stretched out toward him, withered, so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also was split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. If you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way, and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. Then he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. Are you the man of God who came from Judah? I am. Come home with me, and eat bread. I cannot return with you, nor go in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord you shall not eat bread, nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. I too am a prophet, as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying to him. So he went back with him, and ate bread in his house, and drank water. Now it happened, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, Thus says the Lord, Because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back, ate bread, and drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was, after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the corpse. And there men passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road, and the lion standing by the corpse. Then they went and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has delivered him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to him. And he spoke to his sons. Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road, and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion 
had not eaten the corpse nor torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him. Alas, my brother! So it was, after he had buried him, that he spoke to his sons. When I am dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines on the high places which are in the cities of Samaria will surely come to pass. After this event, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but again he made priests from every class of people for the high places. Whoever wished, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing was the sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Please arise and disguise yourself, that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah the prophet is there, who told me that I would be king over this people. Also, take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. Now the Lord had said to Ahijah, Here is the wife of Jeroboam, coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her, for it will be when she comes in that she will pretend to be another woman. And so it was, when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door, he said, Come in wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another person? For I have been sent to you with bad news. Go tell Jeroboam. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Because I exalted you from among the people, and made you ruler over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to you, and yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart to do only what was right in my eyes. But you have done more evil than all who were before you, for you have gone and made for yourself other gods, and molded images to provoke me to anger, and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam every male in Israel, bond and free. I will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as one takes away refuse, until it is all gone. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Jeroboam and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. For the Lord has spoken. Arise, therefore, go to your own house. When your feet enter the city, 
the child shall die, and all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he is the only one of Jeroboam who shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something good toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam. This is the day. What? Even now, for the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land, which he gave to their fathers, and will scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their wooden images, provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who sinned and who made Israel sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. When she came to the threshold of the house, the child died, and they buried him. And all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war, and how he reigned, Indeed, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. The period that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years. So he rested with his fathers. Then Nadab his son reigned in his place, and Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king. He reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. Now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they committed more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also perverted persons in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them, then brought them back into the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So. Rehoboam rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. Then Abijam, his son, reigned in his place. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijah became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maacah, the granddaughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. 
his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. So Abijam rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa his son reigned in his place. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel, Asa became king over Judah. And he reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His grandmother's name was Maacah, the granddaughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. And he banished the perverted persons from the land, and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Also he removed Maacah, his grandmother, from being queen mother, because she had made an obscene image of Asherah, and Asa cut down her obscene image and burned it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all his days. He also brought into the house of the Lord the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. Now there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. And Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and delivered them into the hand of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabrimon, the son of Hezian, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. Come and break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. He attacked Ijah, Dan, abel beth and all Kinnerath, with all the land of Naphtali. Now it happened, when Baasha heard it, that he stopped building Ramah, and remained in Tirzah. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah. None was exempted. And they took away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Baasha had used for building. And with them King Asa built Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. The rest of all the acts of Asa, all his might, all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? But in the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet, so Asa rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. Then Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his place. Now Nadab the son of Jeroboam became king over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin, by which he had made Israel sin. Then Baasha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, 
conspired against him. And Baasha killed him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Baasha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And it was so, when he became king, that he killed all the house of Jeroboam. He did not leave to Jeroboam anyone that breathed, until he had destroyed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite, because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he had sinned, and by which he had made Israel sin, because of his provocation with which he had provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Baasha, the son of Ahijah, became king over all Israel in Tirzah, and reigned twenty-four years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin, by which he had made Israel sin. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying, Inasmuch as I lifted you out of the dust, and made you ruler over my people Israel, and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have made my people Israel sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins, surely I will take away the posterity of Baasha, and the posterity of his house. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Baasha and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the fields. Now the rest of the acts of Baasha, what he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Baasha rested with his fathers, and was buried in Tirzah. Then Elah, his son, reigned in his place. And also the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha and his house, because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord in provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, in being like the house of Jeroboam, and because he killed them. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa king of Judah, Elah, the son of Baasha, became king over Israel, and reigned two years in Tirzah. Now his servant Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza steward of his house in Tirzah. And Zimri went in and struck him, and killed him in the twenty-seventh year of Asa king of Judah, and reigned in his place. Then it came to pass, when he began to reign, as soon as he was seated on his throne, that he killed all the household of Baasha. He did not leave him one male, neither of his relatives nor of his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the household of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Baasha by Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Baasha and the sins of Elah his son, by which they had sinned, and by which they had made Israel sin, in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Elah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? In the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri had reigned in Tirzah seven days. And the people were encamped against Gibbethon, 
which belonged to the Philistines. Now the people who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and also has killed the king. So all Israel made Amri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. Then Amri and all Israel went with him up from Gibbethon, and they besieged Tirzah. And it happened, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the citadel of the king's house and burned the king's house down upon himself with fire, and died because of the sins which he had committed in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he had committed to make Israel sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the treason he committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Gynath, to make him king, and half followed Amri. But the people who followed Amri prevailed over the people who followed Tibni, the son of Gynath. So Tibni died, and Amri reigned. In the thirty-first year of Asa, king of Judah, Amri became king over Israel, and reigned twelve years. Six years he reigned in Tirzah, and he bought the hill of Samaria from Shema for two talents of silver. Then he built on the hill, and called the name of the city which he built Samaria, after the name of Shema, owner of the hill. Amri did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did worse than all who were before him. For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin by which he had made Israel sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Amri rested with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria. Then Ahab his son, reigned in his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Amri, became king over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Amri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty-two years. Now Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. And he went and served Baal, and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation with Abiram, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Segub, he set up its gates, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Get away from here and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Kirith, which flows into the Jordan and it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Kirith, which flows into the Jordan. 
the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there, gathering sticks. And he called to her, Please, bring me a little water in a cup, that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, <laughs> What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? <laughs> Give me your son. <laughs> so he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying. and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge, by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times, and cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. See, your son lives. <laughs> now by this, I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. <laughs> and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab had called Obadiah, who was in charge of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for so it was, while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah had taken one hundred prophets and hidden them fifty to a cave, and had fed them with bread and water. And Ahab had said to Obadiah, 
Go into the land to all the springs of water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so that we will not have to kill any livestock. So they divided the land between them to explore it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Now, as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him, and fell on his face. Is that you, my lord Elijah? It is I. Go. Tell your master Elijah is here. How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. And when they said, he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from you that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. So when I go and tell Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, had feared the Lord from my youth. Was it not reported to my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets, fifty, to a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here. He will kill me. As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the veils. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal, and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then, you call on the name of your gods, and I will call in the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. It is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourselves, and prepare it first. For you are many, and call on the name of your God but put no fire under it. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon. O oh, Baal, hear us! But there was no voice. No one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them. Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves, as was their custom, 
with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them. And when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seers of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt oh. sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. The Lord, the Lord he is, is God. God! The Lord, he is the God! Lord, he is God! Seize the prophets of Baal! Do not let one of them escape! So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kaisha and executed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked. There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. Go up. Say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot. <laughs> and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, 
and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him. Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone have left, and they seek to take my life. Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshai, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Maholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Please, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh, using the oxen's equipment, and gave it to the people and they ate. 
Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Now Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his forces together. Thirty-two kings were with him, with horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria and made war against it. Then he sent messengers into the city to Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, Thus says Ben-Hadad, Your silver and your gold are mine, your loveliest wives and children are mine. And the king of Israel answered, My lord, O king, just as you say, I and all that I have are yours. Then the messengers came back and said, Thus speaks Ben-Hadad, saying, Indeed I have sent to you, saying, You shall deliver to me your silver and your gold, your wives and your children. But I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time, and they shall search your house and the houses of your servants, and it shall be that whatever is pleasant in your eyes they will put in their hands and take it. So the king of Israel called all the elders of the land. Notice, please, and see how this man seeks trouble. For he sent to me for my wives, my children, my silver, and my gold, and I did not deny him. And all the elders and all the people said to him, Do not listen or consent. Therefore he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, all that you sent for to your servant the first time, I will do. But this thing I cannot do. And the messengers departed and brought back word to him. Then Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, The gods do so to me and more also. If enough dust is left of Samaria for a handful for each of the people who follow me, tell him, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. And it happened when Ben-Hadad heard this message that he and the kings were drinking at the command posts that he said to his servants, Get ready! And they got ready to attack the city. Suddenly, a prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. By whom? Thus says the Lord, By the young leaders of the provinces. Who will set the battle in order? You. Then he mustered the young leaders of the provinces, and there were 232. And after them he mustered all the people, all the children of Israel, 7,000. So they went out at noon. Meanwhile, Ben-Hadad, and the thirty-two kings helping him were getting drunk at the command post. The young leaders of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out a patrol, and they told him, Men are coming out of Samaria. If they have come out for peace, take them alive. And if they have come out for war, take them alive. Then these young leaders of the provinces went out of the city with the army which followed them, and each one killed his man. So the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with the cavalry. Then the king of Israel went out and attacked the horses and chariots, and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said to him, Go. Strengthen yourself, take note, and see what you should do, for in the spring of the year, the king of Syria will come up against you. 
Then the servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we. But if we fight against them in the plain, surely we will be stronger than they. So do this thing. Dismiss the kings, each from his position, and put captains in their places. And you shall muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. Then we will fight against them in the plain. Surely we will be stronger than they. And he listened to their voice and did so. So it was in the spring of the year that Ben-Hadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were mustered and given provisions, and they went against them. Now the children of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of goats, while the Syrians filled the countryside. Then a man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel. Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And they encamped opposite each other for seven days. So it was that on the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel killed 100,000 foot soldiers of the Syrians in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city. Then a war fell on 27,000 of the men who were left. And Ben Hadad fled and went into the city, into an inner chamber. Then his servants said to him, Look now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Please let us put sackcloth around our waist and ropes around our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Perhaps he will spare your life. So they wore sackcloth around their waists and put ropes around their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Your servant, Ben-Hadad says, Please, let me live. Is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men were watching closely to see whether any sign of mercy would come from him. And they quickly grasped at this word. Your brother, Ben-Hadad. Go, bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came out to him, and he had him come up into the chariot. So Ben-Hadad said to him, The cities which my father took from your father I will restore. And you may set up marketplaces for yourself in Damascus, as my father did in Samaria. I will send you away with this treaty. So he made a treaty with him and sent him away. Now a certain man of the sons of the prophets said to his neighbor by the word of the Lord, Strike me, please. And the man refused to strike him. Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, surely as soon as you depart from me, A lion shall kill you. And as soon as he left him, a lion found him and killed him. And he found another man. Strike me, please. So the man struck him, inflicting a wound. Then the prophet departed and waited for the king by the road and disguised himself with a bandage over his eyes. Now, as the king passed by, he cried out to the king, Your servant, went out into the midst of the battle. And there, a man came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, your life shall be for his life, or else you shall pay a talent of silver. While your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Then the king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself have decided it. And he hastened to take the bandage away from his eyes. And the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. Thus says the Lord, 
because you have let slip out of your hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction. Therefore, your life shall go for his life, and your people for his people. So the king of Israel went to his house sullen and displeased, and came to Samaria. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near, next to my house, and for it I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or, if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? Because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. You now exercise authority over Israel. Rise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters, Proclaim fast. And seat Naboth with high honor among the people. And seat two men, scoundrels, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him, that he may die. So the men of his city the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him, and the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones, so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel. Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise. Take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. So it was, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Then, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is, in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, 
In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I will take away your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah, because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city. And the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. And he behaved very abominably in following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was, when Ahab heard those words, that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body, and fasted and lay in sackcloth, and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. See how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Now three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth in Gilead is ours? But we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria. So he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight at Ramoth Gilead? I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here, that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer. Bring Micaiah, the son of Imlah, quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Kineanah, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand.
Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him. Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Please, let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king. Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. How many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Now Zedekiah, the son of Kineana, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you. Indeed you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. So the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and water of affliction, until I come in peace. If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. Take heed, all you people! So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the thirty-two captains of his chariots, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. Therefore they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. And it happened, when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his arm. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, and died at evening. The blood ran out from the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Then, as the sun was going down, a shout went throughout the army. Every man to his city! 
and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while the harlots bathed, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, and all that he did, the ivory house which he built, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab rested with his fathers. Then Ahaziah his son reigned in his place. Jehoshaphat the son of Asa had become king over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilai, and he walked in all the ways of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from them, doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered sacrifices and burnt incense on the high places. Also, Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, the might that he showed, and how he made war, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the rest of the perverted persons who remained in the days of his father Asa, he banished from the land. There was then no king in Edom, only a deputy of the king. Jehoshaphat made merchant ships to go to Ophir for gold. But they never sailed, for the ships were wrecked at Ezion Geber. Then Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not, and Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. Then Jehoram his son reigned in his place. Ahaziah the son of Ahab became king over Israel in Samaria in the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. For he served Baal, and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger, according to all that his father had done. The Second Book of Kings Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Belzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers, the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed, and when the messengers returned to him, he said to them, Why have you come back? A man came up to meet us and said to us, Go, return to the king who sent you, and say to him, 
Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. What kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you these words? A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. It is Elijah, the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty, with his fifty men. So he went up to him, and there he was, sitting on the top of a hill. And he spoke to him. Man of God, the king has said, Come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Then he sent to him another captain of fifty with his fifty men. Man of God, thus has the king said, Come down quickly. If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent a third captain of fifty with his fifty men. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and pleaded with him, Man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of fifties with their fifties. But let my life now be precious in your sight. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. Because he had no son, Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know? that the Lord will take away your master from over you today. Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives, 
And as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, Father! My father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Now, when the sons of the prophets, who were from Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look now, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master. Lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. You shall not send anyone. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find him. And when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, Did I not say to you, do not go? Then the men of the cities said to Elisha, Please notice. The situation of the city is pleasant, as my lord sees. But the water is bad, and the ground barren. Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, and cast in the salt there. Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha which he spoke. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up the road, some youths came from the city and mocked him. Go up, you bald head! Go up, you bald head! So he turned around and looked at them, and pronounced a curse on them in the name of the Lord, and two female bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths. Then he went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, 
became king over Israel at Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and mother, for he put away the sacred pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he persisted in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He did not depart from them. Now Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But it happened when Ahab died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. Then he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? I will go up. I am as you are. My people as your people. My horses as your horses. Which way shall we go up? By way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on that roundabout route seven days. And there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now, bring me a musician. Then it happened, when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree, and stop up every spring of water, and ruin every good piece of land with stones. Now it happened in the morning, when the grain offering was offered, that suddenly water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered and they stood at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. This is blood! The kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another! Now therefore, Moab, to the spoil! So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities, and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it, and they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. But they left the stones of Kaharaseth intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, 
he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God, who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall, and let us put a bed for him there, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand. So it will be, Whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? I dwell among my own people. What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. No, my lord. Man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, so he said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him, and went out. Then she called to her husband, <laughs> Please, Send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. It is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed 
and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me, and has not told me. Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready, and take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. <laughs> as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them, and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child. And the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi. Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot, and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered from it a lapful of wild gourds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened, as they were eating the stew, that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. Then bring some flour. And he put it into the pot. Serve it to the people, that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Then a man came from Baal Shalisher and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, Give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, What? Shall I set this before one hundred men? Give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them, and they ate, and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. 
He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master. Thus and thus, said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive, that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Go, and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away. Indeed. I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the far part of the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him. My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Then, if not, Please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the temple of Rimmon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, when I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is all well? All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please, give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags 
with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? Your servant did not go anywhere. Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please, let us go to the Jordan, and let every man take a beam from there, and let us make there a place where we may dwell. Go. Please consent to go with your servants. I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron float. Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed. Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the men whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was, when they had come to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and there they were, inside Samaria. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? You shall not kill them. 
Would you kill those whom you have taken captive with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Then he prepared a great feast for them. And after they ate and drank, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And indeed, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. Then, as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, Help, my lord, O oh, king! If the lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? What is troubling you? This woman said to me, Give your son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. <laughs> so we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him. <laughs> but she has hidden her son. <laughs> now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes. And as he passed by on the wall, the people looked, and there, underneath, he had sackcloth on his body. God do so to me, and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. But Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. And the king sent a man ahead of him, but before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. It's not the sound of his master's feet behind him. And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, Surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight, and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, 
they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly no one was there. Not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to the king's household inside. So the king arose in the night and said to his servants, Let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered, Please let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, they may either become like all the multitude of Israel that are left in it, or indeed, I say they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send them and see. Therefore they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army. Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan. And indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate, and he died just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened, just as the man of God had spoken to the king. Two seahs of barley for a shekel, and a seah of fine flour for a shekel, shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. Then that officer had answered the man of God, Now look. If the Lord would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life. Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. It came to pass, at the end of seven years, that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. 
so the king appointed a certain officer for her. Restore all that was hers, and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Then Elisha went to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, The man of God has come here. Take a present in your hand, and go to meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus, forty camel loads. And he came and stood before him. Your son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Go, say to him, you shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he will really die. Then he set his countenance in a stare until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why is my Lord weeping? Because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds you will set on fire, and their young men you will kill with the sword. And you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. But what is your servant, a dog, that he should do this gross thing? The Lord has shown me that you will become king over Syria. Then he departed from Elisha and came to his master who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? He told me you would surely recover. But it happened on the next day that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face so that he died. And Hazael reigned in his place. Now, in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat having been king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, began to reign as king of Judah. He was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for the sake of his servant David, as he promised him to give a lamp to him and his sons forever. In his days, Edom revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Joram went to Zair and all his chariots with him. Then he rose by night and attacked the Edomites who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots, and the troops fled to their tents. Thus Edom has been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day. And Libna revolted at that time. Now the rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Joram rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Ahaziah his son reigned in his place. In the twelfth year of Joram the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Amri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. Now he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to war, against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. Then King Joram went back to Jezreel, 
to recover from the wounds which the Syrians had inflicted on him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. And Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets. Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him to an inner room. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, and do not delay. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he arrived, there were the captains of the army sitting. And he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu said, for which one of us? For you, Commander. Then he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord over Israel. You shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab all the males in Israel, both bond and free. So I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. The dogs shall eat Jezebel on the plot of ground at Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came out to the servants of his master, and one said to him, is all well. Why did this madman come to you? You know the man and his babble. A lie! Tell us now. Thus and thus he spoke to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then each man hastened to take his garment and put it under him on the top of the steps, and they blew trumpets. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram had been defending Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, against Hazael, king of Syria. But King Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which the Syrians had inflicted on him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If you are so minded, let no one leave or escape from the city to go and tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram was laid up there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, had come down to see Joram. Now a watchman stood on the tower in Jezreel, and he saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company of men. And Joram said, Get a horseman and send him to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So the horseman went to meet him and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. So the watchman reported, 
The messenger went to them, but is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman, who came to them. Thus says the king, is it peace? And Jehu answered, What have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. So the watchman reported, He went up to them and is not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he drives furiously. Then Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out to meet Jehu, and met him on the property of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Now it happened, when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? What peace? As long as the harlotries of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. Then Joram turned around and fled, and said to Ahaziah, Treachery, Ahaziah! Now Jehu drew his bow with full strength and shot Jehoram between his arms. And the arrow came out at his heart, and he sank down in his chariot. Then Jehu said to Bidkar, his captain, Pick him up and throw him into the tract of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. For remember when you and I were riding together behind Ahab his father, that the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, says the Lord, and I will repay you in this plot, says the Lord. Now therefore, take and throw him on the plot of ground according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah, king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the road to Beth Hagan. So Jehu pursued him. Shoot him also in the chariot. And they shot him at the ascent of Gur, which is by Iblia. Then he fled to Megiddo and died there. And his servants carried him in the chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, Ahaziah had become king over Judah. Now when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window. Then. As Jehu entered at the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zimri, murderer of your master? And he looked up at the window. Who is on my side? Who? So two or three eunuchs looked out at him. Then he said, Throw her down! <laughs> so they threw her down and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. When he had gone in, he ate and drank. Then he said, Go now, see to this accursed woman and bury her, for she was a king's daughter. So they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore they came back and told him, this is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant, Elijah the Tishbite, saying, On the plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuse on the surface of the field, in the plot at Jezreel, so that they shall not say, Here lies Jezebel. Now Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote and sent letters to Samaria, to the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to those who reared Ahab's sons. Now as soon as this letter comes to you, 
Since your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots and horses, a fortified city also, and weapons, choose the best qualified of your master's sons. Set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid. Look, two kings could not stand up to him. How then can we stand? And he who was in charge of the house, and he who was in charge of the city, the elders also, and those who reared the sons, sent to Jihu. We are your servants. We will do all you tell us. But we will not make anyone king. Do what is good in your sight. Then he wrote a second letter to them. If you are for me, and will obey my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel by this time tomorrow. Now the king's sons, seventy persons, were with the great men of the city who were rearing them. So it was, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slaughtered seventy persons, put their heads in baskets, and sent them to him at Jezreel. Then a messenger came and told him, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. Lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until morning. So it was in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, You are righteous. Indeed, I conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all these? Know now that nothing shall fall to the earth of the word of the Lord which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done what he spoke by his servant Elijah. So Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and his close acquaintances, and his priests, until he left him none remaining. And he arose and departed, and went to Samaria. On the way, at beth Eked of the shepherds, Jehu met with the brothers of Ahaziah, king of Judah. Who are you? We are the brothers of Ahaziah. We have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen mother. Take them alive! So they took them alive and killed them at the well of beth Ekid, forty-two men. And he left none of them. Now when he departed from there, he met Jehanadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him. Is your heart right, as my heart is toward your heart? It is. If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they had him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he killed all who remained to Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed them, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. Then Jehu gathered all the people together and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little. Jehu will serve him much. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let no one be missing. For I have a great sacrifice for Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu acted deceptively with the intent of destroying the worshippers of Baal. Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it. Then Jehu sent throughout all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. So they came into the temple of Baal, and the temple of Baal was full from one end to the other. And he said to the one in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out vestments for them. Then Jehu and Jehanadab, the son of Rechab, went into the temple of Baal and said to the worshippers of Baal, 
Search and see that no servants of the Lord are here with you, but only the worshippers of Baal. So they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had appointed for himself eighty men on the outside. If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escapes, whoever lets him escape, it shall be his life for the life of the other. Now it happened, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and kill them. Let no one come out. And they killed them with the edge of the sword. Then the guards and the officers threw them out and went into the inner room of the temple of Baal. And they brought the sacred pillars out of the temple of Baal and burned them. Then they broke down the sacred pillar of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal and made it a refuse dump to this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel. However, Jehu did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin, that is, from the golden calves that were at Bethel and Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in doing what is right in my sight, and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin. In those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. And Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh, from Aroah, which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu rested with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his place. And the period that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty-eight years. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jodom, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered. And they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliah, so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds, of the bodyguards and the escorts, and brought them into the house of the Lord to him. And he made a covenant with them, and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. Then he commanded them, this is what you shall do. One third of you who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be keeping watch over the king's house. One third shall be at the gate of Sir, and one third at the gate behind the escorts. You shall keep the watch of the house lest it be broken down. The two contingents of you who go off duty on the Sabbath shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord for the king. But you shall surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes within range, 
let him be put to death. You are to be with the king as he goes out and as he comes in. So the captains of the hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. Each of them took his men who were to be on duty on the Sabbath with those who were going off duty on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the priest gave the captains of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to King David that were in the temple of the Lord. Then the escort stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, all around the king, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, by the altar and the house. And he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands. Long live the king! Long live the king! Live the king. Now, when Athaliah heard the noise of the escorts and the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. When she looked, there was the king standing by a pillar according to custom. And the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. So Athaliah tore her clothes and cried out, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the army, Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not let her be killed in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the horse's entrance into the king's house, and there she was killed. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They thoroughly broke in pieces its altars and images, and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord, then he took the captains of hundreds, the bodyguards, the escorts, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, and went by way of the gate of the escorts to the king's house. Then he sat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, for they had slain Athaliah with the sword in the king's house. Joash was seven years old when he became king. In the seventh year of Jehu, Joash became king, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And Joash said to the priests, All the money of the dedicated gifts that are brought into the house of the Lord, each man's census money, each man's assessment money, and all the money that a man purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord. Let the priests take it themselves, each from his constituency, and let them repair the damages of the temple wherever any dilapidation is found. Now it was so, by the 23rd year of King Joash, that the priests had not repaired the damages of the temple. So King Joash called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests. Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore do not take more money from your constituency, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive more money from the people nor repair the damages of the temple. Then Jehoiada the priest 
took a chest, bore a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord. And the priests who kept the door put there all the money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was, whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they gave the money which had been apportioned into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to masons and stone cutters, and for buying timber and hewn stone to repair the damage of the house of the Lord, and for all that was paid out to repair the temple. However, there were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, any articles of gold or articles of silver from the money brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Moreover, they did not require an account from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be paid to workmen, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the trespass offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. Hazael, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. Then Hazael set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Joash, king of Judah, took all the sacred things that his fathers, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah, kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own sacred things, and all the gold found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and in the king's house, and sent them to Hazael, king of Syria. Then he went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And his servants arose and formed a conspiracy and killed Joash in the house of Milo, which goes down to Silla. For Josachar, the son of Shimeath, and Jehazabad, the son of Shomer, his servants struck him. So he died, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Then Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. In the twenty-third year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, became king over Israel in Samaria, and reigned seventeen years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He did not depart from them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael all their days. So Jehoahaz pleaded with the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. Then the Lord gave Israel a deliverer, so that they escaped from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before. Nevertheless, they did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin, but walked in them. And the wooden image also remained in Samaria. For he left of the army of Jehoahaz only fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. For the king of Syria had destroyed them, and made them like the dust at threshing. 
Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz, all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoahaz rested with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. Then Jehoash, his son, reigned in his place. In the thirty-seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned sixteen years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash all that he did, and his might with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoash rested with his fathers. Then Jeroboam sat on his throne, and Jehoash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Jehoash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face. <laughs> oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. <laughs> and Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window. And he opened it. Shoot. And he shot. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Take the arrows. Strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. <gasps> then. Elisha died, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived stood on his feet. And Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them, had compassion on them, and regarded them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not yet destroy them or cast them from his presence. Now Hazael, king of Syria, died. Then Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned in his place. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had taken out of the hands of Jehoahaz, his father, by war. Three times Jehoash defeated him and recaptured the cities of Israel. In the second year of Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, became king. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadin of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like his father David. He did everything 
as his father Joash had done. However, the high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Now it happened, as soon as the kingdom was established in his hand, that he executed his servants who had murdered his father the king, but the children of the murderers he did not execute, according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, in which the Lord commanded, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their fathers, but a person shall be put to death for his own sin. He killed 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt, and took Selah by war, and called its name Jachthiel to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel. Come, let us face one another in battle. And Jehoash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. You have indeed defeated Edom, and your heart has lifted you up. Glory in that, and stay at home. For why should you meddle with trouble so that you fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not heed. Therefore Jehoash, king of Israel, went out. So he and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced one another at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his tent. Then Jehoash, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh, and he went to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, all the articles that were found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and hostages and returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash, which he did, his might, and how he fought with Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoash rested with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Then Jeroboam his son reigned in his place. Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And they formed a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent after him to Lachish and killed him there. Then they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Jerusalem, with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath and restored it to Judah after the king rested with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Jehoash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and reigned forty-one years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He restored the territory of Israel from the entrance of Hamath to the Sea of Arabah, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel which he had spoken through his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was from gath hepha For the Lord saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter, and whether bond or free, there was no helper for Israel, 
And the Lord did not say that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Jehoash. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam and all that he did, his might, how he made war, and how he recaptured for Israel from Damascus and Hamath what had belonged to Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jeroboam rested with his fathers, the kings of Israel. Then Zechariah his son reigned in his place. In the twenty-seventh year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, became king. He was sixteen years old when he became king, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done, except that the high places were not removed the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Then the Lord struck the king, so that he was a leper until the day of his death. So he dwelt in an isolated house. And Jotham, the king's son, was over the royal house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah rested with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Then Jotham his son reigned in his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Azariah king of Judah, Zechariah the son of Jeroboam reigned over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Then Shalom the son of Jabesh conspired against him, and struck and killed him in front of the people, and he reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Zechariah, indeed they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Jehu. Your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it was. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, became king in the thirty-ninth year of Isaiah, king of Judah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gadai, went up from Terzah, came to Samaria, and struck Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria, and killed him, and he reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Shalom, and the conspiracy which he led, indeed they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. Then from Terza, Menahem attacked Tifsa, all who were there, and its territory. Because they did not surrender, therefore he attacked him. All the women there who were with child, he ripped open. In the thirty-ninth year of Azariah king of Judah, Menahem the son of Gadai became king over Israel, and reigned ten years in Samaria. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart all his days from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Paul, king of Assyria, came against the land, and Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to strengthen the kingdom under his control. And Menahem exacted the money from Israel, from all the very wealthy, from each man fifty shekels of silver, to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back, and did not stay there in the land. Now the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did 
Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Menahem rested with his fathers. Then Pekahiah, his son, reigned in his place. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Then Pekah, the son of Remaliah, an officer of his, conspired against him and killed him in Samaria, in the citadel of the king's house, along with Agab and Ariah. And with him were fifty men of Gilead. He killed him and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, indeed, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned twenty years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Aijan, abel beth Genoa, Kedesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali. And he carried them captive to Assyria. Then Hoshea, the son of Elah, led a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and struck and killed him. So he reigned in his place in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. However, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, against Judah. So Jotham rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. Then Ahaz his son, reigned in his place. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord his God, as his father David had done. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, captured Elath for Syria, and drove the men of Judah from Elath. Then the Edomites went to Elath, and dwell there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers 
to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria. I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Syria and from the hand of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria heeded him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Ker, and killed Reason. Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest, the design of the altar and its pattern, according to all its workmanship. Then Urijah the priest built an altar, according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the priest made it before King Ahaz came back from Damascus. And when the king came back from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and made offerings on it. So he burned his burnt offering and his grain offering, and he poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. He also brought the bronze altar which was before the Lord from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. Then King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, On the great new altar, burn the morning burnt offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt sacrifice and his grain offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their grain offering and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice. And the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Urijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the panels of the carts, and removed the lavers from them. And he took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it, and put it on a pavement of stones. Also he removed the Sabbath pavilion, which they had built in the temple. And he removed the king's outer entrance from the house of the Lord, on account of the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Ahaz rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Hezekiah his son reigned in his place. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, the son of Elah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel who were before him. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against him, and Hoshea became his vassal and paid him tribute money. And the king of Assyria uncovered a conspiracy by Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Now the king of Assyria went throughout all the land, and went up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of Hushia, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and by the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 
and they had feared other gods, and had walked in the statutes of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel which they had made. Also, the children of Israel secretly did against the Lord their God things that were not right, and they built for themselves high places in all their cities, from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves sacred pillars and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. There they burned incense on all the high places, like the nations whom the Lord had carried away before them, and they did wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all of his prophets, every seer. Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Nevertheless, they would not hear, but stiffened their necks like the necks of their fathers, who did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he had made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he had testified against them. They followed idols, became idolaters, and went after the nations who were all around them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. So they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, made for themselves a molded image and two calves, made a wooden image, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire, practiced witchcraft and soothsaying, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. Also Judah did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel, afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of plunderers, until he had cast them from his sight. For he tore Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. Then Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord, and made them commit a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did. They did not depart from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets. So Israel was carried away from their own land to Assyria, as it is to this day. Then the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Cutha, Ava, Hamath, and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel and they took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its cities. And it was so, at the beginning of their dwelling there, that they did not fear the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. So they spoke to the king of Assyria, The nations whom you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the rituals of the God of the land. Therefore he has sent lions among them. And indeed, they are killing them because they do not know the rituals of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, Send there one of the priests whom you brought from there. Let him go and dwell there, and let him teach them the rituals of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. However, every nation continued to make gods of its own, 
and put them in the shrines on the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in the cities where they dwelt. The men of Babylon made Succoth Benath, the men of Cuth made Nergal, the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sephavites burned their children in fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sephavaim. So they feared the Lord, and from every class they appointed for themselves priests of the high places who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. They feared the Lord, yet served their own gods, according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord, nor do they follow their statutes or their ordinances, or the law and commandment which the Lord had commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow down to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him you shall offer sacrifice. And the statutes, the ordinances, the law, and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall be careful to observe forever. You shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, nor shall you fear other gods. But the Lord your God you shall fear and he will deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. However, they did not obey, but they followed their former rituals. So these nations feared the Lord, yet served their carved images. Also their children and their children's children have continued doing as their fathers did even to this day. Now it came to pass, in the third year of Hushia, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father David had done. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehashtim. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory, from watchtower to fortified city. Now it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years, they took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is, the ninth year of Hushia, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. Then the king of Assyria carried Israel away captive to Assyria. 
and put them in Hala, and by the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. And they would neither hear nor do them. And in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Then Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, I have done wrong. Turn away from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will pay. And the king of Assyria assessed Hezekiah, king of Judah, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Then the king of Assyria sent the Tartan, the Rabsaris, and the Rabshakeh from Lachish with a great army against Jerusalem to King Hezekiah. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they had come up, they went and stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool, which was on the highway to the Fuller's Field. And when they had called to the king Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to them. Then the Rabshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? You speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. And in whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Now look, you are trusting in the staff of this broken reed, Egypt, on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now, therefore, I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you two thousand horses, if you are able on your part to put riders on them. How then will you repel one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, Shebna, and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. And do not speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. Has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall, who will eat and drink their own waste with you? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you for he shall not be able to deliver you from his hand, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make peace with me by a present, and come out to me and every one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one of you drink the waters of his own cistern. 
Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. A land of grain and new wine. A land of bread and vineyards. A land of olive groves and honey that you may live and not die. But do not listen to Hezekiah, lest he persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations at all delivered its land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim and Hena and Igva? Indeed, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their countries from my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was, Do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rabshakeh. And so it was, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. For the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God, and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Then the Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he heard that he had departed from Lachish. And the king heard concerning Terhaker, king of Ethiopia. Look, he has come out to make war with you. So he again sent messengers to Hezekiah. Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Look, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by utterly destroying them. And shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered those whom my fathers have destroyed? Gozan and Haran and Reseph and the people of Eden who were in Telassar, where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. O Lord God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim. You are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. 
Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I pray, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head behind your back. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have reproached the Lord and said, By the multitude of my chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the limits of Lebanon. I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter the extremity of its borders to its fruitful forest. I have dug and drunk strange water, and with the soles of my feet I have dried up all the brooks of defense. Did you not hear long ago how I made it? From ancient times that I formed it? Now I have brought it to pass that you should be for crushing fortified cities into heaps of ruins. Therefore, their inhabitants had little power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and the green herb, as the grass on the housetops and grain blighted before it is grown. But I know your dwelling place, your going out and your coming in, and your rage against me. Because your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears, therefore I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way which you came. This shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as grows of itself, and in the second year what springs from the same. Also in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and those who escape from Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor build a siege mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and he shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses, all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home and remained at Nineveh. Now it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the temple of Nisrach, his god, that his sons Adramelech and Shereza struck him down with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Then Esarhaddon his son reigned in his place. In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. 
and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him. Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember now, O oh Lord, I pray, how oh, I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him. Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. So they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What is the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? This is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go backward ten degrees? It is an easy thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. No, but let the shadow go backward ten degrees. So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. At that time, Berodak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah was attentive to them, and showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? They came from a far country, from Babylon. What have they seen in your house? They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord, and they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The word of the Lord, which you have spoken, is good. For he said, Will there not be peace and truth at least in my days? Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, all his might, and how he made a pool and a tunnel and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Hezekiah rested with his fathers. Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned fifty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hephzibah, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, 
according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. He raised up altars for Baal and made a wooden image, as Ahab king of Israel had done. And he worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Also he made his son pass through the fire, practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft, and consulted spiritists and mediums. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. He even set a carved image of Asherah that he had made in the house of which the Lord had said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever and I will not make the feet of Israel wander any more from the land which I gave their fathers, only if they are careful to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they paid no attention, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke by his servants, the prophets. Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has done these abominations, he has acted more wickedly than all the Amorites who were before him, and has also made Judah sin with his idols. Therefore thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah that whoever hears of it, both his ears will tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab. I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. So I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become victims of plunder to all their enemies, because they have done evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood, till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, besides his sin which he had made Judah sin, in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, all that he did, and the sin that he committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Manasseh rested with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Mishalemeth, the daughter of Haraz of Jadba. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. So he walked in all the ways that his father had walked, and he served the idols that his father had served, and worshipped them. He forsook the Lord God of his fathers and did not walk in the way of the Lord. Then the servants of Ammon conspired against him and killed the king in his own house. But the people of the land executed all those who had conspired against King Ammon. Then the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah. Then Josiah his son reigned in his place.
Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Buzkath, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Now it came to pass in the eighteenth year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan the scribe, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshalem, to the house of the Lord. Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of those doing the work, who are the overseers in the house of the Lord. Let them give it to those who are in the house of the Lord doing the work, to repair the damages of the house, to carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. However, there need be no accounting made with them of the money delivered into their hand, because they deal faithfully. Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. So Shaphan the scribe went to the king, bringing the king word. Your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of those who do the work, who oversee the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan the scribe showed the king. Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Now it happened, when the king heard the words of the book of the law, that he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Akbar the son of Micaiah, Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah a servant of the king. Go, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke with her. Then she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. And you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. So they brought back word to the king. Now 
Now the king sent them to gather all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah, and with him all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people took a stand for the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, the priests of the second order, and the doorkeepers to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the articles that were made for Baal, for Asherah, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried their ashes to Bethel. Then he removed the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense on the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places all around Jerusalem. And those who burned incense to Baal to the sun, to the moon, to the constellations, and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the wooden image from the house of the Lord to the brook Kidron outside Jerusalem, burned it at the brook Kidron, and ground it to ashes, and threw its ashes on the graves of the common people. Then he tore down the ritual booths of the perverted persons that were in the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the wooden image. And he brought all the priests from the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba. Also he broke down the high places at the gates, which were at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were to the left of the city gate. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places did not come up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they ate unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter pass through the fire to Molech. Then he removed the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun at the entrance to the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the officer who was in the court and he burned the chariots of the sun with fire. The altars that were on the roof, the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, the king broke down and pulverized there, and threw their dust into the brook Kidron. Then the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem, which were on the south of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he broke in pieces the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, had made, both that altar and the high place he broke down. And he burned the high place and crushed it to powder and burned the wooden image. As Josiah turned, he saw the tombs that were there on the mountain. And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, What gravestone is this that I see? So the men of the city told him, It is the tomb of the man of God, who came from Judah, and proclaimed these things which you have done against the altar of Bethel. Let him alone. Let no one move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came from Samaria. 
Now Josiah also took away all the shrines of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger. And he did to them according to all the deeds he had done in Bethel. He executed all the priests of the high places who were there on the altars, and burned men's bones on them. And he returned to Jerusalem. Then the king commanded all the people, Keep the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in this book of the covenant. Such a Passover surely had never been held since the days of the judges who judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was held before the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah put away those who consulted mediums and spiritists, the household gods and idols, all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Now before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Nor after him did any arise like him. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn from the fierceness of his great wrath, with which his anger was aroused against Judah, because of all the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And the Lord said, I will also remove Judah from my sight, as I have removed Israel and will cast off this city Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went to the aid of the king of Assyria, to the river Euphrates. And King Josiah went against him, and Pharaoh Necho killed him at Megiddo when he confronted him. Then his servants moved his body in a chariot from Megiddo, brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, anointed him, and made him king in his father's place. Jehoahaz was twenty-three years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Now Pharaoh Necho put him in prison at Ribla, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem and he imposed on the land a tribute of one hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Then Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in place of his father Josiah, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Pharaoh took Jehoahaz and went to Egypt, and he died there. So Jehoiakim gave the silver and gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give money according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land, from everyone according to his assessment, to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebuda, the daughter of Pidiah of Rumah, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him raiding bands of Chaldeans, bands of Syrians, bands of Moabites, and bands of the people of Ammon. He sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, 
which he had spoken by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord this came upon Judah, to remove them from his sight because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also because of the innocent blood that he had shed. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim rested with his fathers. Then Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his place. And the king of Egypt did not come out of his land any more, for the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Jehoiakim was eighteen years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehashta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city as his servants were besieging it. Then Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his servants, his princes, and his officers went out to the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. And he carried out from there all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. And he cut in pieces all the articles of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. Also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, all the captains and all the mighty men of valor, ten thousand captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remain except the poorest people of the land. And he carried Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officers, and the mighty of the land he carried into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. All the valiant men, seven thousand, and craftsmen and smiths, one thousand, all who were strong and fit for war, these the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. Then the king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hermutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He also did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah, that he finally cast them out from his presence. Then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and encamped against it. And they built a siege wall against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city wall was broken through, and all the men of war fled at night by way of the gate between two walls, which was by the king's garden, even though the Chaldeans were still encamped all around against the city. And the king went by way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, and they overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his army was scattered from him. So they took the king 
and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they pronounced judgment on him. Then they killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, put out the eyes of Zedekiah, bound him with bronze fetters, and took him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He burned the house of the Lord and the king's house. All the houses of Jerusalem, that is, all the houses of the great, he burned with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive the rest of the people who remained in the city and the defectors who had deserted to the king of Babylon with the rest of the multitude. But the captain of the guard left some of the poor of the land as vine dressers and farmers. The bronze pillars that were in the house of the Lord and the carts and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried their bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, the shovels, the trimmers, the spoons, and all the bronze utensils with which the priests ministered, the firepans and the basins, the things of solid gold and solid silver, the captain of the guard took away, the two pillars, one sea, and the carts which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord. The bronze of all these articles was beyond measure, the height of one pillar was eighteen cubits, and the capital on it was of bronze. The height of the capital was three cubits, and the network and pomegranates all around the capital were all of bronze. The second pillar was the same, with a network, and the captain of the guard took Siriah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three doorkeepers. He also took out of the city an officer who had charge of the men of war, five men of the king's close associates who were found in the city, the chief recruiting officer of the army who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. So Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. Then the king of Babylon struck them and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive from its own land. Then he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, governor over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left. Now, when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, Johanan, the son of Kareah, Sariah, the son of Tanhumith, the Netaphathite, and Jeazaniah, the son of a Maacathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah took an oath before them and their men, and said to them, Do not be afraid of the servants of the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it happened in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal family, came with ten men and struck and killed Gedaliah, the Jews, as well as the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Now it came to pass, in the thirty-seventh year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, released Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from prison. He spoke kindly to him, and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. 
So Jehoiakim changed from his prison garments, and he ate bread regularly before the king all the days of his life. And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king, a portion for each day, all the days of his life.